okay? You're like, what is happening? We used to end this lecture here, and only when I realized you need visualization to make this work. So this is the case where I ask you, how many times, how many ways are they making, if I only give you a dime, a nickel, and a penny, how many ways are they making change for 10 cents? And the answer is four. What's those answers? A dime, two nickels, a nickel five pennies, 10 pennies, right? Those four. And guess what? Those four answers are the red squares in this call chain. Remember they saw the factorial and Fibonacci call chain? This is the count change call chain. Okay, kind of a tongue twister. So let's try it. And it's so clean. Here's the code here. Let's work it together. We're going to work this together. You ask me for a dime with 10, 5, and 1. I either, let's go left, use the coin, which is on, the, on your right, use the coin, or skip it. Okay? So let's the easy case. I use the coin. Right? So what's the case here? What's the use the coin, coin one? Down here. Count change, amount minus the first. That means you use the coin and you decrement how much you're asking for by the coin amount. So it's 10 cents minus 10 cents. Zero. I'm recursing on count change, zero, 10, 5, and 1. So the same list of coins, but I got zero. What happens when I get called with zero? I report one, success. And what's the success? All the coins have been de deducted so far, which is just one of them, a dime. Guess what? There's my dime solution. I love it. There's my dime, this right here is my dime solution, right there. Whoops. That's my dime solution, okay? Then, let's go through. Once the dime's out, that's the use the coin. Now I have the skip the coin. So now I'm skipping the coin. Now I have no more dimes. Because that was just one case. I don't have any more cases with dimes. I'm done with dimes now. Now literally, the, all the rest of the calls are handling nickels and pennies only. So? There are two calls, use the nickel or don't use the nickel. Let's do the use the nickel case, okay? So if I use the nickel, I'm given five and five and one. So five and one are my two coins, and I got a nickel. If I use the coin, what happens? So use means I subtract the biggest coin, the nickel, from the re amount requested, five. Five minus five, actually five minus 10, because it's 10, sorry. Five minus 10, it's 10, this is like 10. I somehow have two. Five minus 10, five one, five minus 10 over here, and now, that's the call. Now, I'm, I, I don't know the answer. That, 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 that's, that's still a pending recursion answer. So 5 and 5 and 1 is over here, OK? Then, that comes in, has two cases, skip the coin or use the coin. If I use it, I subtract a 5 again, I get a 0. Five, 10 minus 5 minus 5 is 0. And now, that's my nickel, nickel solution, OK? I'm going to go over here and actually go rogue and write this in, OK? Screen, pointer, pen, let's do it. Bam. This is the dime solution. Bam. This is the nickel, nickel solution. Every time I go right, I use a coin. Every time I go left, I skip a coin. So this is me using the coin dime. Watch. Tell me right turns over here. This is me using one nickel to get to here and another nickel to get to there. So therefore, that's the nickel-nickel solution. Now, by the way, in the, in the case where I was asked, how many ways are there making change for 5 cents using a 5 and a 1, you had two calls. That's not a base case either way. The number is not 0 or negative, and, the, and I still have non-empty things in my list. So if I'm asking you, how many ways are making change for 5 cents using a nickel and a penny, there are two ways. It's the sum of using the nickel and never using the nickel again. So now I have how many ways, right in here, are there making change for five cents using only pennies? And that is a call, five with a list of just one. And it has two, two chains. It has the don't use it, and it has skip it, or do use it. Let's try it. OK, don't use it. What happens over here? If I don't use it, that means I take the coin away, the penny's out of my equation now, and now my list of coins is empty. I have nothing, but I recurse on that. So I'm recursing on that. I say, is five empty? Yes, it is. Is the number of coins empty? Zero. 
I return zero. That didn't contribute anything to it. Or I could use a penny. If I do use a penny, then I'm recursing on, how about, about four with the penny? Four with the penny says, oh, four with penny, I, I have two choices. I could either use a penny or never use pennies again. If I never use pennies again, it goes to the zero. That's this side, that's my zero. Or I could use a penny. Now it recurses on how many ways are they doing three with the penny. It's still like trying to do it. It's like walking down the tree trying to find that one right now. Is that kind of cool? Three says, I could, either not, I could either never use pennies again, which is a zero, or take a penny away, and now I'm two with a penny. I could use a never use a penny again, which is my zero, or take one away, now it's one with a penny. I could either never use the penny again, which is a zero, or watch this, this is the cool part, this is the drum roll. I got a penny, how many ways are we making one cent with the penny? What if I use it? If I use it, then therefore I subtract out the first list first coin in my coin list, which is one, from the number asked for, which is one, to get zero and recurse on that. What happens when I get called with zero request? What do I return? One. I got it. And there's my one. And what does that mean? What are all the yeses that got to it? Here's one nickel. Here's a, here's a penny to go from five to four. Here's a penny to go from four to three. Here's a penny to go to three to two. Here's a penny go to two to one, here's a penny to go to one to zero, this is the nickel and five pennies. Isn't that awesome? We could do this pedantically to do it with this one. If I skip my nickels, I've got ten with pennies. And you can see it's the same long chain where at the end of the day, I subtract off ten of these pennies and I get off, and look, here's one, by the way, you see this here, look, five with a penny? This is the same answer as here. Look, totally inefficient. Totally inefficient, right? The way this is written, it's totally inefficient. I did this huge amount of code. Here's this big code here, look at this. This big guy in here, this was five with a penny. All those calls were five with a penny. And guess what? Right here is exactly the same thing. This is exactly the same thing. Here's five with a penny, okay? So. That we know is going to return one, so therefore six in the penny is going to call the five in a penny. We know that returns one. There's my one, and this is my ten penny solution. Just like we said, this is a call tree of every single call to count change and what they return and why they return four. Isn't that kind of cool to see? Every time you made a right turn and say yes, if you ever end up at a one, all the yeses were the guys that you said yes to, the coins that you accepted in your solution, and there they are. Dime, double nickel, nickel five pennies, ten pennies, okay? So that was complicated and hard and the hardest possible example of recursion you're going to see in this class, but we gave it to you. We're trying to understand. We wouldn't ask you to build this code. This code is really tough. As you become more proficient as a recursive author, you're going to be able to think of, see this kind of problem and think, hmm, I have a recursive solution to it that might be as complicated or even more so than that. That's as you get later on in the course.